Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lamb of God Fellowship. And for those of you watching live, welcome. We're glad you guys could join us on the video. Um, and as people are coming in, uh, obviously today is soup day. You can smell it. So if there's anything left afterwards and you want to grab some soup, uh, it's a fundraiser for our missions. But as we get started, I want to give you guys a scripture to get you encouraged and on, uh, kind of just like set up for what God has for us today, okay? So Jesus is talking, and he says this, have faith in God. Everybody say, have faith in God. Faith. Okay, we have faith in a lot of other things, but Jesus, point your attention to God. Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will happen. It will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This is an incredible promise. This is incredible that if you will pray to God in accordance with his will, and you don't doubt in your heart, you believe it, Jesus says, it will be yours. And we are men and women of faith, right? So what I often say is, we're believers. And you know what believers do? They believe. They believe in the word of God. We are believers here. We believe in the promises of God. Um, and so a lot of people have been dealing with some sickness, a lot of influenza and stuff going, to, going on. And I want to pray for you and I'll pray for our families uh, because this is what the Bible says about sickness. The Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. When Jesus went to the cross, before he went there, he took a beating. And the, 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 the prophet Isaiah saw by the Spirit of the Lord what was going to happen in the future, and he declared that by these stripes he was taking, the beating on his back, that he was bearing our sicknesses and diseases. He wasn't just paying for our sin, which he did. When he died, he paid for our sins. His blood was shed for our sins. But he was beaten, and he took those stripes upon his back for our sicknesses and diseases. Okay, that's what the Bible teaches us. So we are believers, right? One more thing before I pray, because the reason why we pray is we are declaring by faith the promises of God. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that God does heal, and God wants to heal you, and God has healed you. And God's healing is for you and your family. The other thing I want to give you, an analogy, is when the Israelites were in Egypt, they took a lamb, and it was now called the Passover lamb, and they put the blood on their doorposts over their home. And God said, go in and stay in there, and the destruction will pass over. There will be no harm to you and your family if you stay under the blood. You stay under the blood. And we are under the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus. His blood was shed, and when we place our faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, we come under the blood of the Lamb. And no sickness, no destruction will come near me or, or my family by faith. And when it does come, I rebuke it, and, uh, and, I def and, and through Jesus, we defeat it. Okay, is anybody with me? Okay, so let's pray for ourselves and our families. Let's stand, please. I'm gonna pray. We're gonna pray together and declare the promises of God over our families that we will have divine health and wholeness and no sickness will come near us and we're, we're gonna cancel that out. So let's, let's just go to God. Lord, we thank you today is your day and we thank you for your word, which is final. It's eternal. It's all powerful. We thank you for by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed, and we come against uh, influenza and sickness and disease that many in this room have had or have uh, that's been attacked by or our families or f family friends that we know of. And right now, we just come under the blood of Jesus, and we declare healing and wholeness, and we receive your healing and wholeness and strength into these bodies. We declare our bodies to reject all sickness and disease in the name of Jesus because we have healing and wholeness through what he bore on the cross on our behalf. And so we thank you, God, today for divine health 
and wholeness in Jesus' name. For us, for our families, for our friends that we're thinking of, we extend that blessing of healing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come into your presence, to encourage each other, to be built up and strengthened in our faith. So God, let us just have a great time this morning worshiping you, hearing from you, loving each other, having a great celebration together as we come under your presence today in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Let's do it. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tune till I made. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tune. Till I'm there. Come on, sing it out. Call my name. I ran out of that cave. Out of the darkness. To your glorious day. Now your freedom is all that I know. give you all the praise this morning do your name we just ask God that you God would let us feel alive in your presence this morning 
God, that those that are, feel weary or feel dead, God, that you would breathe a freshness of life into us, God, that we would find purpose and meaning to what you have for us. We love you, Jesus. When we just give you our, our, our weak yes today, no matter how weak it is, all you, all you desire is a yes. So we give that to you.
moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Collins, and I want to share with you this morning as we start communion time. So this morning, God's goodness and love is running after you. Do you trust in that? Will you surrender and give him your everything? His plan is to see you wholly restored, healthy, and a functioning part of this church body. As the parable in Matthew 18, 12 through 4 says, look at it this way. If someone has a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders off, doesn't he leave the 99 and go after the one? And if he finds it, doesn't he make far more over it than over the 99 who stay put? 
Your Father in Heaven feels the same way. He doesn't want to lose even one of these simple, simple believers. So no matter how far you feel you've strayed or how bad you are, His mercy will never fail. You will always be covered by the goodness of God. Allow Him to hold you close to His heart. If you believe in this promise and believe in Jesus Christ, we invite you this morning to join us in the act of communion. After the tithes and offerings are collected by the ushers, they will then release you row by row to receive the elements. Please take them to your seat and pray with your family and your friends or take advantage of the prayer teams that we will have up front. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the sacrifices that you've made and that your goodness and your mercy will always persevere. Please bless the tithes and offerings this morning as well as the communion plate. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
I would like to um, close our communion time with prayer and remind you that you are deeply loved and God is for you and he's not against you. And um, all of his promises are coming out of a place of love. Uh, you'll never have God condemn you or speak uh, evil to you or harm to you. He only, he is love. And so he, he only knows to love. That's what he does. And he loves you. And it's hard for us to get our minds wrapped around that, but he has everything that you need. Uh, even in this moment today, whatever you're contending with, he really is the answer. He really does have what you need. Um, and a lot of times we get stuck on the real practical details of life. But God is everything you need. And he can open the doors for all provision that you need to be released into your hands and to be given to you. And whether that's healing or finances or health or relationships or wisdom or guidance, he is what you need. Okay, Lord, we just thank you that you are everything and you have given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. And that, that's what communion reminds us that you purchased us back out of a kingdom of darkness and brokenness and evil and pain into a kingdom of light and life and freedom and wholeness and healing and purpose and joy. And so, Lord, you are everything that we need. And I just pray, God, upon a blessing upon each one here this morning to access you. You are the giver of life, the sustainer of life. You are the creator of life. You are at the center of all things. All things hold together because of you. You are the word. You are everything. You can make anything happen. All things are possible in you. And our trust and our hope is in you. So Lord, release your blessings. Release the answers. Release the provision uh, to each one here this, this day, Lord. Let, let us feel close to you. Let us sense your love and your presence today. May we all be encouraged and built up in the faith today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a minute, as we always do, to greet one another. Um, give out a handshake, high five, a howdy do, a hug. Make sure everybody is welcome this morning. Okay, as you're finding your seats, I just have a couple of announcements to give you, a couple of highlights in the bulletin. Um, first of all, Valentine's weekend is coming up, so uh, gentlemen, get your flowers ready, okay? Here is a, a flyer in your folder. We've been talking about this a lot. It's our XO conference. It's a marriage conference. It is going to be outstanding. In fact, I found out this morning, it is the largest marriage conference in the world uh, because it's a live simulcast all across this country and several other countries. And we're going to be joining thousands of people all around the world, just pouring into our marriages, having fun and growing together as couples. So if you're getting married or if you are married, then we would like to see you come and just invest in that relationship. Uh, we have a lot of fun here and uh, it's just a great, a great thing. Is there music playing or? Huh? It's the keyboard. Can you help? Can you help, please? Thank you. 
I just like, I just felt like there was something going on. <clears throat> Not normal, but. So please come to our EXO conference. Uh, you won't regret it. And I'm always a proponent of being a um, proactive investor in the things that matter the most. And one of the things that I've realized with marriage is when I got married, I didn't know, any, I didn't know what I was doing. I never took the marriage. I never, I, like, you, like you don't actually get trained. You get a, a license. And what, are they crazy giving us licenses to get married? Like you go, you know, if you want a gun, you actually have to take classes, you know, and learn how, safety, hunter, all that stuff. Marriage, they're like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Go for it. You know, it's like, you're on your own. Good luck, buddy, you know. So you have to like, what I found out is, oh my word, I have, I have to learn how to be married. I have to learn how to love, and I'm, and I'm still learning, and I'm still working on it, and you, we just need to. If we want to have, you know, good marriages, and if we want a marriage that's going to last, we have to work on it. We just have to. That's just part of the deal, right? All right. And also for the men in the house, we have a great conference coming up called Man Up. And it's in your folder. Um, the date's March 6 and 7. Last year, I think we took about 30 to 40 guys down to Cornerstone. It's a great church. Pastor Tim and Rhonda Forstoff, um, friends of ours, and just amazing church. There'll be about four to 500 men gathered together on a Friday night and a Saturday morning. What we do is we just commute. We just, it's only 45 minutes away. So we just carpool, go down there Friday night, come back, wake up, do it again in the morning, and come back. So if you're interested, it's gonna be 20 bucks. There's the dates. Uh, save them, um, and get ready to sign up for that, okay? Uh, and then one other thing I wanted to mention, last week, if you're here, I mentioned this last week, but if not, um, one, of the, uh, one of the goals that we have this year as a church, as a family, a financial goal, is to raise enough money to be able to do a brand new parking lot. So um, if you are interested in praying about giving towards that, anytime that you give, just put parking lot or park or something on your envelope and give that towards that project. And we're praying that God will help us raise enough money to do a brand new parking lot. And uh, actually, it's going to be basketball courts. Because people would rather give towards a basketball court, right, than a parking lot. So um, actually, uh, there are no public basketball courts uh, in the uh, city, uh, except the one that we have right here. And, and, the, and it's just old and it's beat up and it's made out of plywood now. And so we're going to add a couple of hoops for the neighborhood kids to enjoy. And then I think the township is going to be adding some hoops over there by Seymour Park, too. But there aren't, can you believe it? There's no public basketball hoops anywhere in the city. So we need to help the basketball team out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But um, no, pray about that. If you're interested in helping, um, just put down, designate that as parking. And we hope that we can do that. Every um, school day, by the way, our parking lot is used by the school. And I mentioned this last week. It helped alleviate one of the... Uh, one of the big problems that I thought we had in our city, which was parking space for our elementary school and parents and grandparents trying to drop little ones off and having to cross the street and double park and park in the park. and what, It was crazy. And so uh, we have about 15 teachers who park here uh, every day. And also a bus comes up and picks up some of the special kids there. Or some of the kids, they're all special. I don't know what I said special. But there's a special group comes out. I don't know who they are but they get picked up in the bus route too. So we're helping out the school quite a bit by doing that. Well, today I want to start a new series. And two weeks ago, um, after church, I found out that, uh, as many of you probably did later in that day, a, a tragedy happened uh, with uh, Kobe Bryant and some others on a helicopter, and they crashed, and it was big news that day. And uh, all of the people in the helicopter lost their lives. And as people began to reflect on Kobe and his career as a basketball player, is one of the greatest basketball players of all time, they started talking about his approach to basketball, and they were saying stuff, that I actually didn't know this, he had this mindset called the what? The Mamba mindset, the Mamba mentality. And so as they were talking about that, and they were saying how his, his, his focus, his dedication was to be the very best he could be in basketball, and um, how he, he would, his, his mantra or his Mamba mindset was, Always get better, always keep pressing, never give up, always go for it, keep growing, keep improving. Every moment counts, never surrender any moment, any opportunity. And so he created this kind of mantra for himself and those around him saw it and knew it and, and, and saw him succeed with that mindset. And that was cool 
And as an athlete, um, you know, I, I like that. I appreciate that kind of stuff. I, I speak about that stuff often as a coach to my, my students. Um, and I also practice that tough, mental toughness and things like that too. But I was thinking about it differently. I was thinking, what's the, well, what's my mindset as a Christian? It's one thing, and I'm not downplaying Kobe Bryant at all. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that it's one thing to, to pursue excellence as a basketball player. But then I was thinking, but I have something even greater that, that, that I'm pursuing. I'm pursuing the purpose of my life and your life. What is our mindset? Because we're not just trying to be a great basketball player. We're not just trying to be, you know, maybe a great teacher or a great, you know, business owner or a great mom. Those things are all great, but there's something bigger than that. We all were created by God for a purpose. So what is the mindset of someone like that, a Christian. And what in the world was Paul thinking? The apostle Paul and the other apostles that walked with Jesus. What was their mindset? How did they view their world? How did they view God? How did they view their purpose in life? And what fueled them enough to be willing to give their life, literally give their life, instead of denying Jesus was the Messiah? And they were happy to do it. And we read things like Paul, he, he had a sense in Timothy, he was like, my race is run. It's coming to the, uh, the end. I have run my race. I've finished my course. And now, and he starts talking about his mindset. And now, what is laid up before me, the prize of my heavenward, upward call in God. And it's like, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know if I should stay or if I should go. I mean, if I stay, it'll be better for you all, but if I go, it'll be better for me. He knew his life was threatened. He knew his life on earth was coming to an end, and he did. He became a martyr for Christ. He didn't just say, here, kill me, but he was martyred for his faith. He did not deny his faith, and he had a sense from God that his time was up, that he has run his race, and he was embracing it. I think this guy is either crazy or he's thinking about something totally different than what most of us think about. And so I got a a mindset that I wanna share with you for the next three weeks, and I just call it the abundant life mindset. The abundant life mindset. Jesus put it this way in John 10, 10. We live in a world, and in this world, the Bible says there is a prince, the prince of this world, who's the devil. And he has come, the thief has come to steal, to kill, to destroy, not just physical. We think physical often when we think of these words of destroying and killing and stuff, but he wants to steal your joy, steal your purpose, steal your destiny. He wants to kill your marriage, kill your relationships with your kids, kill your future. He wants you to suppress you, bind you up, keep you down so that the glory of God and the image of God that is upon you does not shine forth because that's his enemy. God is his enemy and you are the You are the climax of God's creation, and he has breathed his life into you. He has put his fingerprints all over you. You are his masterpiece. He put his image upon you, and the devil doesn't want God's image to reflect the glory of God any longer. So he comes after us, and Jesus said, that's what's going on, but I have come. This is what's really cool. God has come to us in this world that's a mess, that's broken, that's painful and, and messed up. It's a backwards world. God comes into this world and he says, however, I have come that you can have something totally different. You can have life abundant. Life abundant. You, you can be rescued from this world of pain and confusion and hurt and purposelessness and competition and never good enough and shame and guilt and failure and what up? You just fill in the blank. He said, I have come that you can have life and have it abundant. So this is the abundant life mindset that I want to share with you that you no longer have to just go with the current of a broken world. You don't have to be conformed to the thought patterns of this fallen, broken, messed up world. Jesus has a totally different experience for you than the one that you've been living Okay, and, it's, and I'm just calling it abundant life. I don't have a cool word like the, the mamba, you know, ma- mamba mindset, whatever. I don't have a cool, it's just abundant life. Maybe in a couple years I'll come up with a cooler word, but 
right now. It's just live life to the full. What does that look like? Now, in the context of this, he is talking about himself being a good shepherd. So John 10.10 10 says what I just said, but John 10.11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. And he's telling a story, and the people then all were very familiar with shepherds and sheep. Uh, they're all over the place in the land of Israel, and most people were either fishermen or they were, or they were shepherds or farmers. That's what most people did. And so then he goes in to describe our relationship to him. He said, I'm coming to rescue you out of this mess, and my role here is I'm the good shepherd. And your role is you're a sheep, and I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to protect you. And it reminds me of uh, Psalm 23, where David is writing, and he has this revelation of who God is to him. And he starts by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And he has this revelation, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Today's message title is, um, Everything is Provided. Part of the abundant life mindset is for you and I to understand that I have everything that I need in God right now. I don't know if you've ever been, um, you know, like on a mountain on a cloudy day, and you heard how far you could see, but you can't, you get up there and you look, and there's, there's clouds or there's whatever, and you can see so far, but you can't see as far as maybe you'd want to on a clear day. Or maybe you're in the woods, and you're in the woods, and you're looking around you, and um, maybe you can even hear something, if you're a hunter and you hear something, but you, and you're looking and you can't quite see, you can only see so far. You can look around, you see the trees, you see the, the, the terrain, but you can only see so far. In this room, I can only see so far. I can see these walls, I can see a little bit through the windows there, the soup, I can see the soup out there. I can smell the soup, you know. Uh, but there is more than what I can see. I know that my truck is parked right over there. I know there's a parking lot over here. I know that my house is over there and I could almost hit a golf ball to it. <laughs> and I can see it in my mind's eye. I can see it, but I can't see it physically right now at this moment. Now, here's the reality of the world that we live in. We see what we see with physical eyes, right? These physical eyes. We can only see so much, but there is something else the abundant life mindset does not see only with physical eyes, but with spiritual eyes. It's just like you, you it's just like I described. You know that you can't, I can't see my house, but I know my house is over there. I can, I can see it's there. And in the spiritual realm, there are things that God is showing us and teaching us that are there we just don't see it here right now. And I want to ask you a question, and this is going to drive my, my point home to you all, I hope. What came first, the spiritual realm or the physical realm? The spiritual realm. And what was created, the spiritual realm or the physical realm? The physical Everything in the physical realm has been created from the spiritual realm. So which is greater, the creation or the creator? It's no contest. If you go to your pole barn, like I do, and you just throw a couple boards together and hammer them and put some nails, and all of a sudden you come out with a birdhouse, right? And you create that. What comparison is there to the creation and the creator? There's no comparison whatsoever. Now listen, here's the problem. We live in the birdhouse. You know, we, we live here. This is what we know. This is what we feel. It's what we hear. It's what we see. It's what we smell. It's what we, you know, we have these things, but it's physical. But I'm telling you right now that the spiritual realm is more powerful, it's more real, and it is eternal. 
And the creation is temporary. It's not as strong or real as the spiritual. It's very important. People who have an abundant life mindset understand that. And they don't just look at the stuff around. They're looking beyond the stuff around to the truth of what's really true and what's really eternal and where everything is going. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, so here's the truth. You have everything that you need right now for life and for godliness. And you're like, where is it at? <laughs> I don't see it all. Okay, so, so Jesus gives us this amazing prayer. His disciples said, Jesus teaches how to pray. They said, okay, I'll, I'll teach how to pray. Pray this way. Uh, Our Father who art in heaven, Praise you, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in the spiritual realm. Let's pray this way. God, you are almighty. We praise you, and may your kingdom come, and may the will of heaven and the truth of the spiritual realm in which you dwell and I came from May that will now come down here right now in this experience of my life. Let your will be done. So Jesus gave you permission to literally, and we've sung, I think we sang a song like this last week, something about pulling heaven down. What is that talking about? That's literally what I'm talking about is there's a higher truth and we pull the will of heaven down. It's the will of God. It's the word of God. It's the promises of God. And Jesus said it himself, listen, when you're praying, don't doubt in your heart, but whatever you pray, according to God's will, as you pray it, believe it, and it will be done. It will come from the spiritual place to the physical place, and it will change your life. It will change reality. Let me just say it again. Everything that's been created has been created from the spiritual realm. And God has put the same breath he used to create everything that we have now inside of you. And he has equipped you and empowered you with his word, which reveals his will. And when you take his breath and you align it with his word, which declares his will, then heaven comes to earth. Come on, this is exciting. All right, so this is part of the abundant life mindset. We're not defeated by the circumstances. We're not focused or overwhelmed by the temporary physical. Our attention is on something higher, and we're pulling things down into earth. We're seeing changes being made because of our faith in Christ. So he, he goes through that list of being a good shepherd. I'm going to read it real quick. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want means I have abundance. I have no lack. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's what sheep love, green grass. He feeds us. He takes care of us. He leads me beside quiet waters. That's what sheep drink is water. He will satisfy you. He will meet the needs of your life, the food, the drink that we need. He restores my soul. This means that he heals our hurts and our pains in our heart. We've all been talking, well, we've been talking about this for three or four weeks now, so I don't want to repeat hash everything I've said, but just to remind you, he heals our hurts. He heals our hearts. He, he, he's the only one that can do that, and he does that. He restores our soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I love this. So righteousness in the Bible is actually walking on the path that God has laid out, and it leads to perfect life and peace and fullness and abundance, so this says, my shepherd helps me, leads me on a path of righteousness for his namesake, but, but for my benefit. Um, I'll put it this way. My, my little guy, Eli, is nine years old, and he's playing his second season in basketball, okay? So he's got mo he got motivated this year to learn how to play basketball. So I'm like, okay. So I'm going to spend, some, hey, Dad, you want to shoot? Yeah, I'll shoot. And we go out to the driveway, and so then I start, co that's what I do. I, co I got to coach him. So I'm like, all right. Let's go, man. I'm going to teach you how to do a spin drum. I'm going to teach you how to do a left-hand layup, right-hand layup, you know, all these things. And so while I'm teaching him, 
you know, he's, he's kind of small, and the ball's kind of big, and so, you know, I used to do the same thing. You take the ball, and you're like, Hoo-ah! you know, and you want to, you know, like 30 feet away and, like, make this super long shot. So I'm coaching him. I'm teaching him. I'm saying, okay, here's what you got. This is the technique that will help you be successful. If you do this well, and you stay with it, and you practice it this way, the right way, you will have great results in the future. You'll be so much better than everybody else who's not doing it the right way. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? So he is learning to dribble with his left hand. And he's in the game last week, and he's coming down, and he's dribbling with his left hand, and he's coming up to the left hand layup, and I'm watching him and saying, is he going to do it? Is he going to try to shoot with his left hand? And he did. I was so proud. He went up, shot with his left hand, and missed it. (laughs) And I was like, oh. I turned to my dad and said, Dad, you see that? He used his left hand. It's awesome. There's, he has made left-handed layups, too. So he will not shoot with his right hand coming in for the left-hand layup because he's listened to my coaching, okay? And he believes me when I tell him, you do it right, you keep doing it, you're gonna be so awesome. You're gonna be, it's gonna work out well for you. Now, listen to me. That is what God does for us when it says our good shepherd leads us on paths of righteousness. He is... It, you know, I used to look at this, and I say this a lot. I used to look at this as a rules book. You don't do this, you do this. I don't look at it that way anymore. I look at it as a coaching book for life and success. And as we follow God, if we listen and we obey, it's not because we're earning something. It's because we're going to prosper if we follow God's path. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, a lot of us know this verse. Uh, we have it memorized. The wages of sin is death. That's a verse in the Bible. You know there's another verse in the Bible? I think it's in the uh, Proverbs. It says the wages of righteousness is life. That's pretty awesome. And that's what God does. Is he leads us on a path of righteousness, not because he says, you better do this or I'm going to get you. No, because he's like, man, follow me and you will find life freedom. You want a great marriage? Do it my way. Come on. You want your kids to well, do it my way? You want your finances blessed? Come on, do it my way. This is how you do it. Okay? And things are blessed. So it's not about earning righteousness, you know, because we can't do anything to earn our own righteousness. You guys right on that? You're with me on that one? Because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But our righteousness comes by faith in Christ Jesus. Him alone has purchased righteousness for us. We didn't do anything for it, which means we're all qualified, okay? So the shepherd goes on, he's talking about them. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So God is with us. This part of the abundant life mindset is realizing God isn't somewhere out there. God is right with me right now when I'm going out and getting soup, when I'm driving home, in the car, when I'm at school, when I'm on the, uh, you know, on the basketball court or on the wrestling mat, or I'm at home or I'm in the grocery store. God is with me, and I will fear no evil because he's with me. God's got my back. He's the good shepherd. He literally lays his life down for me. He is willing to die that I might live. That's what he has done. That's who he is. Man, I'm cool. I'm good. He's with me. I can relax. He's with me. It's like, I don't know, I've never had a brother, but if I had a big brother, I could feel it. If I'm with my big brother, I'm like, I'm, I'm cool. My big brother's going to take care of me, right? Or if I, if I were with my dad, I never felt afraid. My dad was with me. What's going to happen? My dad's got me covered, right? But God is with you. He's the good shepherd. No fear. So if you're living in fear, you need a revelation. God's with you. All right, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so shepherd had a rod and a staff, and it was to beat off the predators and to guide the sheep. It was never to beat the sheep. It was always to protect the sheep, rescue them out of a bush, keep them from falling off the cliff or or whatever it was, and to beat off the wolves and the lions. And God is determined to destroy Anything and everything that's trying to destroy you. Aren't you glad about that? And that protection brings us comfort. God is against 
your enemies. He is the one who contends with those who contend with you. That's pretty good news. Okay, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So even in the midst of this fallen, broken, dark world, and we have enemies, our, our main enemy is the devil, but we, were, we live in a fallen world, even in the midst of this fallen and brokenness, God presents a table before us, a banquet. We can still have joy and abundance and rest and rest. This is the abundant life mindset. You anoint my head with oil, which talks about in the Bible, when people were anointed, it was for healing from sickness and disease. Oil was used to heal sicknesses. And so God, the good shepherd, heals us of our diseases. The the psalmist says, my cup overflows. I have more than enough. The blessing of God is on your life. And surely, and we sang this song, surely goodness and love or goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. The mercy of God, the goodness of God is chasing you down. And God is after you, betcha. He's after you. He's after you with his love and his goodness. And surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I have eternal life in him. This world has nothing that I need to cling to. I have everything in eternity with God. And I have everything I need right now for this kind of life that God's called me to. Isn't that good news? All right, that's the abundant life mindset. And one of my goals uh, for today, two goals for today is to help us begin to learn how to live every day from a place of confidence in my righteousness in God through faith in Jesus. Because this is where it all starts. It's kind of like um, we have a office over here, and we have a, like a little key pad lock thing that we, we push the button and it, it dead bolts the lock and, and the offices are closed. So to get in, we have to have a code. We have a number code. So every day I'm coming in here, if I'm the first one, I'm like, beep, 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 beep. And you hear it go, Wink. and it opens. And I got the code. I get, get, I get access into my office, right? So why was I telling you that? <laughs> what was I talking about here? Oh, yeah, righteousness. <laughs> Man, this is my year of jubilee. 50 years. The best is yet to come. (laughs) Got to eat some more walnuts, some superfoods. Okay, so righteousness is the key. It's the key for all of us to enter in to the promises of God. Let me explain it to you this way. If you are not absolutely convinced in your heart that God has forgiven you and you're right with him, and it was all a gift of God. And by faith, you received that gift. And you were cleansed of all your sin. And you are made right with God. And there's nothing more you can do or anything in the beginning you could have done to be more right with God than you are right now through what Jesus has done for you. If you're not convinced of that, then you're not going to be convinced that God really loves you, that he really has everything for you right now that things are working out for the better for you, that God has got your back and he's your good shepherd. But until you know that you're righteous because of your faith in Christ and what that means, that means I am now a privileged son and daughter of the king. I I am, man, the deck is stacked in my favor, right? I mean, God is out on my side. God's on my side, right? And Paul has that moment when he says, if God is for us, Who can be against us? Whoa, it's not fair. You're right, it's not fair. You got God on your side. Now, once you get to that point, you see what accesses or allows you to begin to walk into this abundant life that Christ has for you is obedience. Because you're not obeying because you have to. You're not, okay, God says this, so I better do that. But God says, I can't do that. What a killjoy or whatever. It's not like I'm trying to measure up to get righteousness. I'm not trying to prove anything to God. I'm not trying to earn anything from God. But my whole perspective will change if I understand righteousness because then obedience begins to be my response to run after the love of God and the fullness that God has provided for me. Because I completely trust him. 
It's not a burden. It's not an obligation. It's like, get out of my way. This guy loves me. He's got everything for me. He's for me. Come on, let's go. And the blessings are unlocked in your life. The blessings. It's just like teaching Elijah. You know, my son. Son, you gotta learn how to shoot it like this. This foot, a little bit ahead of this one. This, everything's in a line, right? Coach, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Follow through. This is how you do it. Not like this. Not like that. On this side, you do Okay, if you do it this way, no, not like this. <laughs> if you do it this way, I don't say it this way, but if you do it this way, you will be blessed. Not because you earned it, but because that's the access to unlocking that blessing. Do you see what I'm saying? All right, so that's what we're talking about in terms of this abundance. So the confidence in my righteousness in Jesus, but the other thing I want you to learn to live every day is from a place of abundance and God's complete provision. So let's say this together. Everything is provided. So I'm gonna relax. <laughs> I wanna talk to you why I say this. Um, everything that we do here is not opinion-based. This is scripture, all right? All of, our, all of our teaching is based on principles from the scripture. And I'm gonna take you all the way back to the beginning, to Genesis chapter one and two, where God created everything. Now when God created, do you guys remember the one word description that God used? He created it, the light, whatever, and it was? Good, it was good. Everything was good. How many days did God spend creating? Six days, excellent. And then there was a seventh day, and that was the first week, and then it seems that then we had another set of days. So we have seven days in our week because God said there's seven days in a week, okay? And so he created six days, and whatever he did, in creation, the Bible says it was good. And then he got to us, and what day did he create mankind on? The sixth day. And when he finished creating us, it was very good. We are the climax of his creation. We were created after everything else was created. So when mankind showed up, let's think about the situation. There were trees with delicious fruit hanging in abundance from the branches. There was fruit and nuts and food everywhere. All the animals were there. All the vegetation was there. Mankind did not uh, have to lift a hoe, didn't have to break up the ground, didn't have to get the rocks out, didn't have to pull weeds, didn't have to put seed in the ground, didn't have to wait and water it and cultivate it and wait and wait and produce something. Mankind showed up and everything was provided in abundance. You guys with me? So this is the creation norm. When I say norm, that's where we get the word normal. Most teenagers don't like the word normal. Nobody wants to be normal. Everybody wants to be unique and special and do something nobody else has ever done before. Well, uniqueness has nothing to do with normal. Normal, by its definition, is the standard. It is a standard, agreed upon standard. And so the standard that God set at creation is very important to understand because whatever that standard is when he created things and he says, this is it, this is how it should be, this is good, okay? For instance, a man and a woman come together in marriage. That's in the very first couple of chapters. And this is how it is. It's designed, this is the norm, this is good. Now, sin comes into the world and just scrambles everything up. And we are kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden was everything that we needed for life. In fact, everything we needed for eternal life. There was the tree of life. And so now eternity is in the balance. We are removed from the Garden of Eden and we're under a curse because of our sin. Because we said to God, we no longer are going to allow you to provide everything for us. We want to do it ourselves. We want to be our own God. We want to call the shots. We want to decide for ourselves what is good and what is evil. We want to know that. We want to decide. We want to be independent, self-sufficient. That's what we did. 
Okay, that's the bottom line of what happened in the garden. And so God says, okay. And so he, we're removed from all of God's resources, from eternal life, from fellowship with God, from peace, from just picking fruit and eating it. And now the land is cursed. And you can read about this. It says, now the land is cursed, and by the sweat of your brow and the work of your hand, now you have to work the land and try to survive. And that's how, we, how we've been ever since. Striving, working, laboring, sweating, the burdens of trying to make it in this life until Jesus comes. And Jesus shows up and says, you guys, you guys tired? Are you guys like worn out? Are you, are you, are you heavy burdened? He says, come to me and I will give you what? Rest. He says, you guys, I have a different life for you to experience. It's called abundant life. If you return to me, I'm gonna take you all the way back to creation, to the garden, where the premise and the normal way that God or mankind is to relate to each other is this is how we are to relate in the garden. This is how it's to be. God provides everything and man rests. That's the creation norm. Some of you are just arguing with me right now in your minds. And so I argue with myself for many years. What are you talking about, rest? I'm a man. I'm making it happen. If it is to be, it's up to me, right? We're going to work hard. We're going to make this happen. I'm just telling you that that is a worldly, sin-filled mindset. Creation, the way that we were created was, we, mankind was created to completely, fully depend on God for everything. That's what we see in creation. Mankind did not produce anything on their own until the fall. And then it was for survival. God is everything for you. He is the solution to everything that you're dealing with. And if you are striving and stressing and freaking out with the responsibilities and the problems and the struggles of this world, you, I have great news for you. You know what? It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. You can learn about a higher spiritual overarching truth that is yours if you access it. It's called the abundant life in Jesus. I'm telling you, you can have it. Why? Because Jesus said, I have come that you might have life to the full. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm not trying to give you a little pep, pep rally here, a little feel good message. I'm trying to help you and I come into who we really are as sons and daughters of God. We are privileged children. You are privileged children of God, and he has provided everything for you and everything for me. So the passage of scripture that I wanted to share with you and have you meditate on this week is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Uh, before I break that down, I want to go quickly through what did Adam and Eve have? What did they have? Because this is what Jesus has come to restore. It's very important for you to understand this. Jesus has come to rescue you and me out of the experience of sin into the experience of son and daughtership, okay? And he's bringing us back to the conditions that were set in motion at creation, where we come to a place where we are fully trusting in God. Now, many of you said the right answer when I asked, when, is man, when was mankind created? And I heard the number six. So they were created on the sixth day. So what was the seventh day? It was a day of rest. So man's first day, this is a standard creation principle. The first day of man was a day of rest. And so you and I are coming out of this chaotic world of pressure and stress and never getting enough done. And we're learning to stop trusting in our self-sufficiency and our self to produce and survive. And we're learning how to trust in God and rest in him and watch him provide. Doesn't mean you don't go to work. 
I'm not, I'm not saying that. There's a difference in how we think, though, when we know God's got my back. He's providing for me. He's opening the doors for me. He's got a new way uh, of me to experience this world. Um, uh, you know, this last year, one of our uh, daughters had an emergency surgery. And they told us, uh, they said 100 years ago, she would have died. Because we wouldn't have known what was wrong with her. We wouldn't have caught it in time. She would be dead in three days if you guys hadn't come in. We're like, whoa, praise the Lord. The favor of God uh, was on us to, know, like, to, to deal with this thing immediately as soon as it happened. So anyway, she goes there. She has a surgery. And this happened at like, uh, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She's having surgery at like 5. She's out of surgery at like 7 or 8. She's done with her recuperation by like 9.30, and we're home in bed at 10 o'clock. I'm like, what? This is amazing. God's favor is just all over that. And then our insurance, you know, and the bills start coming in, and it's like, you know, six months, eight months, whatever later, you're still getting bills. And we're getting these bills, and we pay a couple of them. We get another bill, and we think it's a repeat bill. So my, my wife's on the phone with someone from the hospital trying to figure it out. And the lady on the other end, I believe, was because of God's favor on our life, and, and how we, we, we just continued to trust in God. And so we had uh, about three to $4,000 worth of bills on top of what our insurance covered, right? So this is gonna be something we have to pay. And uh, didn't have it, but we weren't freaking. There's times when you can take, have a problem or a situation, and how many of you know you can just be stressed over it, or you can freak out about it, or it can just be, it can be on your mind all the time, I don't know if you're like me, but if those things, when those things happen in my life, then I get irritable, I get grouchy, people around me, you know, are not blessed. I'm not blessed, I'm not happy, I'm concerned, I'm chewing my holes in my mouth, you know, worrying about it. And that's the, that's the mindset of the world. But when I get it right, and I had the mindset over here, the abundant life, I'm thinking, God's got this covered. I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm not being stupid and saying, oh, la, 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 it's just gonna disappear. But here's what I do. Instead of stressing, striving, and freaking, we come over here, and we are trusting, and we're listening, and we're resting. I'm telling you, it's a completely different experience of life. And anyway, through this conversation, the lady said, hey, you guys might qualify for some help. So we filled all the paperwork out. Long story short, came back, and they took care of 100% of the bill for us. And it was great. It's a money thing. I know it's a money thing, but I'm talking about other things, anything. There's, there's problems. There's a relationship issue. Uh, there's, a, there's a, you know, where do I go from here issue. There's a physical issue. Whatever it is, we could do the same thing with it. Or we can give it to God, and this is what I like to say to God. I like, so something happens, and I turn to God and say, hey, God, you got a problem. You got a problem, okay? And I give it to God, and I say, well, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to trust, and I'm going to listen, and I'm going to rest. See how you take care of this one. And I'm, but I'm listening, and I'm going to follow whatever he, whatever he says, but I'm not going to put God over there as a last resort prayer at the last minute, and I'm going to get to work, roll my sleeves up, and try to figure this thing out and stress about it and not sleep at night and, you know, just freak out. Because I've done that, and I don't sleep, you know, and I do get headaches, and it's not fun, and uh, it's not the abundant life. So that's what I'm talking about here, okay? You with me? All right, so, so when we're talking about that, um, Here's a couple of affirmations, and I want to talk about and finish with this scripture, okay? What I've learned to say, and if you have your log notes, it's in the beginning of your log notes. What I've learned to say is these types of affirmations. And the verse I'm going to break down for you real quick, uh, the first affirmation comes from it. It says, by faith I have everything I need for life and for godliness through Jesus. I memorized this passage of scripture many years ago, and I often will say it in my prayers, and I'll say it to myself. Uh, especially when I'm faced with a need or there's a lack, apparently lack. I'm going up to heaven. I'm going up to the spiritual world, and I'm saying, Lord, I thank you that I have everything I need for life 
and for godliness. Just like we went through that whole thing in Psalm 23. I have food, I have water, I have provision, I have guidance, I have protection. I have you, I have eternity. I, my enemies, I, I can rest in the midst of my enemies because you're with me. I go, you know, that's who I am. Everything I need for life and everything I need for godliness. Did you know that's just one promise that you can lay hold of in your own life and it'll bring great peace to you. But another affirmation I like to, I like to make is this next one. And I'd like to encourage you to, to say these to yourself this week if this is helpful. And it's kind of this idea of making my, my problem really personal and recognizing that Jesus is right there with me. And so I'll say this, Jesus, I thank you that you are my perfect and complete solution to every situation that I face. And if there is a situation I'm facing, Jesus, I thank you. You are my perfect and complete solution to this situation, and I rest in you. Just show me what I'm to do, but I'm gonna give the burden of it over to you. That has given me great peace over the years in training my way to, uh, you know, thinking about that. Because otherwise, I own it. I feel responsible, so I need to worry about it. I need to figure it out, and it just doesn't work, okay? So here's the last verse I want to share with you guys, and I want to ask you to take these notes. If you want to work on having an abundant life mindset, then you're going to have to retrain your thinking, okay? So take these notes, take these verses, think about them, pray about them, start to create your own personal affirmations and your own self-talk so that you are looking up, not looking down. You're looking at the greater truths, not the temporary truths. And you're learning how to pull heaven down into earth through the promises of God. So here's, let's read this together. I think, yeah, it's up on the wall here. Okay, let's just read this together and I'm gonna break it down as we finish. He has by his own action given us everything that is necessary for living the truly good life in allowing us to know the one who has called us to him through his own glorious goodness. It is through him that God's greatest and most precious promises have become available to us, men or women, all of us, making it possible for you to escape the inevitable disintegration that lust produces in the world and to share in God's essential nature. All right, so let's look at that. The first thing that jumps out, now when I read scripture, the first time I read it, honestly, most of it just flies over my head. So I have to slow it down, I have to look at it again and start focusing in on what it's really saying. So I, I focus on a couple of things. First thing I see is, by his own action, this has nothing to do with my effort. It has nothing to do with your effort. It is by the grace of God that he has opened a way for me to be rescued from this terrible turmoil of this dark, broken world into a whole different life of abundance. He did it, not me. That, that's why, as your coach, I'm telling you, all of you qualify. You're all qualified. Every one of us. Doesn't say if, then. It says he has. Okay, the next time I'm looking at it, I like the word everything. You guys like the word everything? Self-explanatory. By his own action, he's given us everything that is necessary for you to have a good life, but really it's, it's about godliness and everything you need for life and for godliness, everything that you need. And it says, in allowing us to know the one who has called us to him, he has called us through his own glorious goodness. It is through him that God's greatest and most precious promises have become available. I like that word available. It really helps me because it's not, um, it's not automatic, but it's available. And it's available if I access it. If I access it. It is available to who? All of us. Why? Because he's done it. He has given all of us the access code to his promises because he loves us and he's for us. This is what the grace of God is all about. So it's become available to us, making it possible for us to be escaped or rescued out of a broken, fallen, painful, evil, bondage lifestyle to be rescued out of this, it's, I like it, inevitable disintegration. <laughs> the longer you stay in here, the more you just begin to dissolve, uh, rot. You know, it's like you're that wicked witch of the West or something. You're like, ah, 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 
you know, and you're melting or something. It's like the more you hang out in the world, the more damage takes place in your soul, in your mind, in your heart, in your body. I mean, some people, you look at them and you're like, man, they are living hard. You can see it on them. You can see the heaviness on their countenance. You can see the, just the, the weariness of their bodies. Not so with you. You don't have to experience that. You can have an inner life that is bubbling up. You can have healing. You can have a release. You can have joy. He made it possible for you to escape that. Aren't you privileged? You are special. It ain't fair. You got the inside lane. You got the best of the best. And so um, we get to share in God's very nature. The goodness of God. When he created you, he didn't hold anything back. He's never held anything back from you. He's for you. You got everything you need. I really hope that this week you get that into your head. Wow. I got everything I need. Everything. In life and godliness, God has, he isn't holding anything back. Some people think, ah, it'd be nice to be a pastor because they must teach you guys some special prayers. You know, all right, like I have a, a special, you know, connection with God that you can't have. No, God has no respecter of persons. I'm reading the same Bible you're reading, and I'm just trying to hold on to the same promises you're holding on to, and I'm trying to train my mind to believe and have faith just like you are. I do have a pretty big perk, though. You know, my perk is I get to study the Bible for a living. <laughs> so, yeah, I am super blessed. I am super favored, you know, because I get to study the Word of God for a living. But you, you and I, all of us need to study the Word of God to live. Right? You hear what I'm saying? So, um, I hope that you go on this journey with me for the next couple weeks, like really trying to get not a mamba mindset, but an abundant life mindset, a mindset that you are special. God has provided everything you need. You'll begin to look at life differently. You'll begin to expect the favor of God around you at all times. If you're a person that is looking for the next wrong thing to go on in your life, uh, then boy, this could really change your life because you could be looking at life a completely different way. I'm just watching out for God's goodness to tackle me. What's next that God's going to bless me with? You see? And how can I access the promises of God? So what I would do, if you're, if you're wanting to do this with me, this is what I'm doing. I'm not asking God right now for things that he's already promised me. I'm thanking God for the things he's already done for me. That's what I'm doing. This is what I am doing personally. I'm changing my prayer life from begging God to do things he's already said he's done to thanking God that that is his will and he's already accomplished this. And I'm trying to pull heaven down to earth by saying, thank you, God, that I am healed. By your stripes, I am healed. And I receive the release of that healing from heaven to earth. Body, you're healed. Mm, Jesus' name, come on. Thank you, Lord. You have everything we need for a new parking lot. It's not even, I'm not even gonna, I'm not ever, listen, don't ever worry about being asked for money here because God's already got it covered. You're, and when you start to understand the abundant life, you'll understand that too, that, hey, everything I have is God's anyway. And as whatever God wants to do with my life, my money, my resources, if I'm listening and following, then I am flowing in that abundance and I will never lack. It's when I go over here and think that it's up to me. When I start to have to, I have to stockpile my own stuff because I'm on my own. That's a poverty mindset, and your life shrinks. So whatever your situations are in life, whatever's going on in you, you know, I want to challenge you to find out what has God already said in the spiritual, what is true here, and begin to thank God for that and to receive that into your now. Okay, let's stand together as we pray. All right, thank you, Lord. This morning, before we go, 
I want to pray for you. And if you're here this morning and uh, you're not a Christian, you haven't placed your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to do that this morning. And what you do is you just simply receive him into your life and he will forgive you of your sins. Doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, and you'll have a brand new beginning in him and you can be right with God and you can have that righteousness, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you can have that righteousness that I was talking about earlier. And if that's you and you're here, Pastor, I'm ready to get right with God. I wanna pray a prayer with you and, uh, and you're gonna start a whole new life. Would you bow your heads, please, everybody? If that's you, would you just lift your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I'm gonna get right with God today. I want to give my life to Christ and be forgiven of my sins. If that's you, would you just put your hand up high so I can just agree with you and celebrate your decision? Okay, I don't see any hands. So I'm, I'm hoping that all of us here already have that faith in Christ. But if you don't, you can make that decision anytime. But I do want to pray for all of us in this room because I know we all have things going on. And that God would help us to uh, cross over some of our thinking patterns into his and begin to experience more and more of this abundant life that Jesus said he came to give us. So Lord, we come to you today and we thank you for the, the gift of this body, the gift of this day. Thank you for the gift of your word and all of your promises. Thank you for the gift of salvation in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have restored us to our created position in you. And so today, Lord, for those of us who have been running the rat race, been trying to survive and struggle, lots of stress, lots of freaking out, lots of burdens, lots of weights on our lives, Lord, I just thank you and I want to remind all of us that you reversed the curse of us having to survive on our own. And by trusting in you, we come back to that position of rest. And you designed us and created us to live out of a place of rest, out of a place of trust, and out of a place of abundance, with no worries and no fears and no insecurities because you're with us and you provide everything that we need. So Lord, I pray, according to that passage in... Psalm 23, as our good shepherd, we pray that you would lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake, that we can walk out the good of your ways to enjoy the benefits of our salvation. And Lord, help us just to be alive in you and free in you and healed and made whole in you. Thank you for this family. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for coming alongside of us and never leaving us, never forsaking us. Lead us and guide us, we pray, God, that this would be a week of fruitfulness and a week of abundance and a week of great change for the better. We thank you and praise you for all of this, Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, which means provision, healing, fullness, nothing broken, nothing missing. It is the abundance word of God. Peace, peace. May you have his peace in his name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.